It's still early in the year, a time when many professional photographers are in a semi-state of hibernation. Along with backing up images, clearing memory cards and maintaining equipment, one common job of the season is to refresh images you offer for sale, whether it be print sales from your website or frames you stock at galleries. Simply leaving the image as standard won't do much to turn heads and increase sales, but there are a number of simple tasks you can complete to give the frame a more professional feel, and also to quite literally put your own name on it. All these tasks can be easily achieved in Affinity Photo in less than 5 minutes, and the first job is to start with a mono conversion. Why? Well, when people are walking around galleries, the eyes are bombarded by a sea of distracting colour. Going black and white helps a potential buyer to focus on the form and texture of your subject, cutting through the colour feedback around them and making a connection that will hopefully entice them to stick their hand in their pocket and pull out a wallet. Adding a border to the frame further helps separate your images from everything around it, and finally, adding a title and your name to the border sprinkles that last professional polish to the print. With your image open in Affinity Photo's Photo Persona, hit Command and J to make a duplicate layer from your background layer. You'll see it appear in the Layers panel on the right. Our next job is to click on the Add New Pixel icon from the bottom of the Layers panel. This is identified by a checkerboard icon. Finally, we're just going to reorder these layers. Firstly, we're going to drag the pixel layer in between the two background layers, and then we're going to select the original background layer and delete it. All you should be left with now is the clear pixel layer on the bottom and the duplicate background layer on the top. With your duplicate layer selected, head back to the layers panel and click on the adjustments icon. From the menu, Select black and white, and a dialog box will appear. You can now use the color channels to fine tune the exposure levels in your image. So there's a lot of blue in this frame. So I'm gonna select the blue and cyan sliders. There's also a lot of red and yellow. So I'm gonna fill about with these sliders as well. Once you're happy with your color sliders, head back to the adjustments icon, but this time select brightness and contrast. You can now tweak the brightness and contrast in your frame, which is definitely worth doing because when you select the color sliders from the previous step, it can knock out the brightness and contrast in your frame. So it's worth recalibrating this with an adjustments layer. If you feel it's necessary for the frame, you can take the mono conversion one step further. Head back to the adjustments icon a third time, click on it, and this time select lens filter. When the dialog box appears, you'll see a filter color and you can choose any color from the color wheel. There's also an optical density, which is essentially the strength of the filter. This time though, once you're happy with the color, head to the layers panel and change the blending mode from normal to soft light. By adding this lens filter adjustment layer, you're giving the frame a split tone look. Here's the frame before, and here it is after with the lens filter adjustment layer turned on. We're now gonna add the border to the frame. Head back to the background layer, make sure it's selected, and then head across to the toolbar and select the Move tool. And the keyboard shortcut for this is V. You'll see blue lines around the frame with corner handles. We're going to drag these in, but doing one at a time won't give correct proportions. Instead, we're going to hold the Command button, drag in the corner, and the frame resizes proportionally. One clever trick with Affinity Photo is if you move the frame left and right, a green line will appear on the screen when it is centered, which is most helpful. Now at the moment, you'll see our border is all transparent. We want to add a color to this. So we're gonna head back to the toolbox and select the Flood Fill tool. And the keyboard shortcut for this is G. Set the color to black, white, or whatever color you want your border to be. And then hover around the transparency area, click once, and the tool will fill the border with white, black, or whatever color you've selected. We're nearly there, but we just need to add that final polish. So head down to the toolbar one more time and select the artistic text tool. The keyboard shortcut for this is T. Click where you want to place the text, and you can then write out your title. With the text selected, you can then change the font and the size of the text to your personal taste. 
With the move tool selected, you can drag the text to make sure it's centered. And look, there's our green line again, telling us we've got it right. All you need to do now is head up to file, export, and you can save the file in your chosen format. Have fun getting your prints gallery ready, and I'll see you next time.